Hi, congratulations on your new RV. We're really excited for you. Please make sure before you're signing that you bring the following items with you. If you are a cash buyer, please make sure that you bring a cashier's check, no personal checks at time of signing, or you may bring actual cash. If you're a finance customer, please make sure that you bring proof of insurance listing your specific lien holder. If you need that information, please call us ahead of time. Also, make sure that you bring all valid driver's license of all persons that will be listed on the title. If you have a trade that you're trading in with us, please make sure that you bring your 10 day payoff as well as your title and all persons who will be listed on the title of that trade. Um, arrive 30 minutes early before your appointment time so we can properly inspect your unit and also make sure that you have the fridge on and running prior to arrival. If you have any questions, please feel free to give us a call at 810-686-0710. Thanks so much. Have a great day. Hello, it's Michael Trabun's RV Center here to congratulate you on your Palomino Columbus 366 RL fifth wheel. You guys have picked a really cool unit here. I'm going to walk you around it, show you how to use a few things to get the best out of your camping experience. Let's start by talking about arriving at the campsite. A couple things to take into consideration when parking. On your campsite, you're going to have a slide. But you're going to need more room for these awnings to come out. On your off campsite, besides your slides, there'll be plenty of room for them to come in and out. Also, want you to think about where your power and water connections are going to be. You've got a big, long 50 amp cord way in the rear of your unit here. On your driver's side of your tow vehicle in the back corner, and your docking station is going to be on your driver's side, but toward the front. So, park accordingly so you can utilize the facilities at the campsite. Recommend having a nice long water hose. Once you arrive, we will unhook our hitch. Coming to our hitching station. It's already on, but you will just touch both these arrows to get it to come on. Just simply lift you, lift the front of the unit up, get your vehicle up out of the way. Once your vehicle's up out of the way, hit auto level. Auto level is going to go ahead and run down all your auto leveling systems as well as adjust your landing legs. Once them get all the way down, they'll hop around for a few minutes. When they're done, this green light will flash. You'll know that everything's level and stable, and then we can go ahead and hook up our power and water. All right, we're turning back here to this rear corner. Your power cord stores inside. Hand pull, and then power retract. Now, when you got two hands, I recommend guiding it in as you're retracting it. At the end of this big, long 50 amp cord is, in your convenience pack, a dog bone to go from 50 down to 30 amp and if you need to there's also a 30 to 15 amp plug that will go on the end of that all right we got our power hooked up let's go ahead and hook up our water again up here is our docking station inside propane your second one I'll go ahead and remove this hose real quick here so we can see everything on board. So they made it real easy here. We got four levers to control, and here they're going to tell you how to hook up. At campsites, we are going to hook up to city water connection, city inlet to the faucets, fixtures. So we're going to go blue left, red up, green right, white down. So these now match that. Then we're going to grab a water pressure regulator. This water pressure regulator is going to reduce the water pressure to 40 to 50 psi, protecting the lines in your unit. Don't know what the water pressure is at different campsites, so I always use these when putting fluid in here. Come to city water. Open that up, hook up your water pressure regulator, hook up your hose. And after that hose has been on for a little while, you can go inside and deploy your slides. What I need you to do is get inside and open up all of your water lines. Get all your water taps opened up, get a nice steady flow of water going through them. Once you got a steady flow of water going through them, you know that all your water lines are full. You can turn that on from in, your hot water heater on from indoors. It is always on right here, doesn't hurt it, it's tankless. Uh, to turn that on, you'll just turn on your propane and turn it on indoors. Line that flew up. Just remember that we'll get hot up in there as well. 
Now let's say we're gonna go camping and we're not gonna use city water. We're gonna go dry camping or boondocking. In that case, we're gonna do a two-step process. We're gonna start by power tank fill. White down, green to the left, red up, blue down. Hook up your hose in the same spot, but you're gonna go inside and you're gonna watch the levels of your tanks. While you're filling this, have someone watch it out here, and then when you're inside checking your tank, once this fresh water tank is full, you'll remove that hose. Once that tank is full, we're gonna switch from power tank fill to dry camping. White down, we're gonna move our red and green up, our blue to the left. Now we match dry camping, then we can turn on our water pump. You turn it on out here, or you can turn it on indoors, but you turn on your water pump to utilize that fresh water once it's full and you remove your hose. And you switch to dry camping. All right, we're all set up to camp with power and water now. I'm gonna go ahead and walk you around to the rest of the outside of the unit, continuing here in the docking station. You saw our blue spray hose that hooks onto the spray, uh, hot and cold shower. Cable and satellite hookups here. Again, city water, power tank fill, then switch to dry camping. Over here is how you set it up to winterize and to sanitize. Winterization is siphoning in um, the antifreeze and sanitize is siphoning in soapy water. Both ways you want to uh, bypass your pumps. City water connection, black tank flush. We'll talk about that when we dump our black and gray tanks here. The area to run your hoses down through, your container for your water filter. Couple of 110s out here. Get in your auto leveling system. Here's your inverter. Up front here, your propane. Again, hot water heater. This is blue for your furnace. Two things on that. If you're running your furnace, don't touch it. It does get hot and make sure nothing's ever blocking it. Down there is where we'll dump our black and gray tanks. That's where those come out at. Icebreaker valve and access to the back of your fridge for your technicians. Low point drains will be easier to access when our slides are closed. As well as your fresh water drain here. Gray tank, extra one back here for your outdoor kitchen on the other side. Retraction for your power cord. You got a ladder, utilize it. Go up there a couple times a year, check the seams of your roof and caulk as needed with recommended RV roofing caulk. You also prep for a Furion backup camera. Device you can purchase from our store that sets on the dash of your tow vehicle. Put another piece on here and that gives you a backup camera for the unit. Your accessory hitch. And around here to your outdoor kitchen. Your lighting's over here. Quick connect LPs here. I'm going to try to show you quickly how to just flip this over to become your griddle. It travels much better in the position I just removed it from. Up underneath there is your quick connect LP. Flip that back around for travel. Just back in. Make sure that's locked back in for travel. 110 in our sink. Come around to our campsite. Got our big awning here. Nice porch light. The awning does have pitch adjust. You can pull down on either end of this and that'll run your rainwater away into the direction that you pull it. Inside here, you're all set up for TV. You can also control your slides from down here. This is your battery disconnect. That will disconnect all the battery power to the unit. That will come important later when I talk about your carbon monoxide propane detector. Out here is also a connection for your vacuum system. If you pull this forward, inside there is your vacuum bag. And crank for your spare tire a manual crank for your slides your other propane up here batteries check them every now and then make sure those have a wiggle loose over time you also have your liquid for your leveling system 
another docking light several more up top here these are just vents for your battery area and then you're also prepped for solar you can plug in solar panels right there and that'll trickle charge your batteries that about covers everything on the outside now let's go take a look on the inside all right so coming up inside you know the first thing i always like to point out is the fire extinguisher make sure that you and everyone that's camping with you knows the fire extinguisher is located near the entry doorway in case of an emergency so they come straight ahead right around the corner here is my control panel there is information for the one control wi-fi gateway touch this button down here in the bottom and that's going to bring up your control panel now you can go to home it's going to show your bedroom temperatures turn on your lights turn them off you can immediately look at your black and gray tanks excuse me and turn on lighting over here you're going to go to devices this is generally where you're going to run everything from your awnings if you had a generator on it your auto leveling your heat your lighting minor panel and slides i'll go through them i'll start with your awning i want to show you on your awnings here so touch that that'll bring up what you got you can plus or minus here or touch it again and it will bring up a big plus or minus plus we'll run it out on this awning you're only going to want to run these out until your flap falls down like that <laughs> and you can see your silver bar if you're not paying attention and you're holding on to that plus that will continue to run itself out and start to run itself up backwards so keep an eye on it when you run it out make sure you don't run it out further than you need to nice bright lighting on the arms again simply so by hitting the minus these one touch control panels on all units are very touchy so just make sure you hold your finger where it needs to be that awning back in we hit my back arrow awning number two just run it out just to show you it working here right there we got equipment in the way i don't want to run it too far out back that up and it tells you what it's doing got our awnings done i'm gonna go ahead and close our door so we can hear and go back to our control panel so that was your awnings next would be a generator if you got a generator hook up on here you'll turn it on or off here go back HVAC, which of course is your heating and cooling. So if we go to your bedroom, actually we'll stay here in your main climate. Oh, it's with your bedroom. You just set it to your temperature. We'll go back here to your main climate, which will take me to the living room. We'll go ahead and raise the temperature in here. It says it's 71. Make our source for heat, heat only. Hear that kick on? Shut that off. Now, because it's the heat, it takes a few minutes for the fan to cycle through before shutting off. So let's go ahead and bring this down. We're gonna bring it down and go to our source. And this time, make it cool only. Just crank on our AC. off on that go back so all you do is set your climate for each area lighting all of your lighting you can do from here all of our exterior lighting I can shut off awning lights as well as all these interior any other lighting will be accent lighting uh, again your leveling you can do your auto leveling from here see that you're almost perfectly level here best to do your auto leveling from outdoors because that way no one's moving around in the unit 
uh, monitor panel. Show that real quick. You can see your tank heater. Turn that on and off. Your water pump if using potable water. And here's where you can see all your tanks. So here, where you'll go to your monitor panel when filling up your fresh water. That's where you watch your fresh water tank be filled. Wouldn't fill it all the way. I'd get just short of a uh, full and then have them remove the hose. And then you turn on your water pump when you want to utilize that water. Lastly, your slides. And we'll utilize these when we close the unit up. Temperature reader. Always does help the uh, thermostat work better. This is for your fan down here on the end. 110 USB pop-up power ports. Take all those. Individual lighting up underneath here. Extra sink. Big LG fridge. Whole separate manual on this. Telling you everything about that. There's also a safety latch for travel. So we'll take this. Twist it right into a screw area. It's sitting inside there. And that will safely hold your doors. Use two hands to get it screwed in there nice and tight, but that'll hold your doors closed for you. There it goes. Keep that from bouncing down the road. Self-explanatory microwave does have a light, and a high, and a low fan. Uh, not sure if your gas is on. Turn these to light and hit the press forward for your spark. Um, yeah, the gas is shut off. Looks the same way on your oven here. Doesn't look to be a pilot light. Looks like you'll just turn it to your temperature. Also above fan there and lighting. Lighting above here. Pantry. Power recliner. Show you those working real quick. There's number one. And number two. Lighting for over here. Remotes. So there's your big Connex TV working. Behind here, lift up on that. All this storage area. DVDs, a DVD player, etc. you could use. Just on that, tuck that back in there. JBL sound system. There's remotes for all of these sound systems, your fireplace, uh, Max Air vent. I will do that real quick. on that will open and turn on your fan and do all your other controls from here hit off it will close itself and shut itself off this remote actually should right be right there by your entry doorway also have one for your sound system i'll just turn it on here jbl sound system really cool Uh, kind of staticky in this big metal building, but indoors, outdoors, up front living uh, bedroom, or all three. Um, our modes, USB, auxiliary, auxiliary 2, optical, HDMI's, arc, Bluetooth, and FM. Big woofer there for that. Fireplace. Not just for looks anymore. I can turn it on and show you all the pretty colors. But the biggest thing, folks, is the heat. This chilly in here in the morning or evening. Crank this up on high. And instead of wasting your gas, this will get it toasty in here in no time. You can already feel the heat from it. I'm going to show you quickly how to turn your sofa into beds. Got Velcro cushions on the back here. you can do it individually leave one up as a seat so lift up here in the middle pull your bar out pull it towards you and lay it back down 
just that quickly you got another sleeping quarters do the same over here just make sure you lift the front up first hold your leg down bring it back down and again sleeping quarters just make sure that when putting these back you lift the back up first otherwise you could damage your sofa Go our back to a sofa. Dinette area, strap downs for those, extra 110 here in your island. A little plumbing to maintain, just keep an eye on it. You know, you are bouncing a house down the road, it's almost all pecs nowadays. In here will be your water filter, as well as toilet paper holder, things that you can put where you want to put them. Info on a few different items on your coach. You do have these pop-up towers on both ends of your island. Push and lift. Here on the side of our island is your 12 volt carbon monoxide propane detector. The reason I mentioned that's 12 volt, it's always running off your battery. So if you are out dry camping, boondocking somewhere, nothing plugged in charging your battery, use your battery disconnect to keep this from running your battery down. If you're going to be gone all day. In the hallway, simply lift up before you trash. There's the filter for that. Over here is your breaker box and fuses. Mostly 15s looks like in here, a couple 25s in the bottom. I highly recommend having a handful of those with you when you go camping. Entry closet with a TST system, tire pressure monitoring system. I will send you a separate video specifically from TST on this system. Coming up to our bathroom. A couple things to talk about in here. Shower doors. Make sure they are in a open position, snapped open for travel. Again, more plumbing to keep an eye on. 110 with GFCI reset. Your lighting. And here's your water heater. When that's full of water, all you gotta do is turn this on. Set it to the temperature you want it to be. And whenever you want hot water, you'll have it. Here's your other TV. Bedroom remote will be in your bedroom drawer. More doors to make sure that you have snapped into a safe closed position for travel. That one, that one, and this one. Let me close your unit up so you want to make sure all of these are snapped closed. Prep for washer and dryer in here. The other 110s, in need of that. Under your bed, storage. Another temperature reader. Your lights up here should touch once for that white, again for that white. And one last door to make sure it's snapped into open position. Your bedroom door so all of your doors are snapped closed but well, covers everything in here let's act like we're leaving the campsite and close the unit up in our bedroom we went ahead and snapped all our doors closed shut off our lighting bathroom door safe position closed now I come to my main control panel and turn this on 
four slides, I'm going to go back to lighting. I'm going to shut off all this lighting here, and then I can see all the individual lighting. I need to walk through the unit and shut off. Just quite a bit. Give me a moment. All right, so I went through the unit. I've shut off all the lighting except for one light that can be can shut off from here. I'm going to start with my bedroom slide. Touch that. This is where I say doors and drawers. Make sure you went through the unit, closed all doors and drawers, especially the drawers on this dresser. Make sure that everything's closed because they uh, utilize just about every inch on these slides. Batten down the hatches on everything loose that you don't want to bounce around during travel. In this kitchen, make sure all drawers are closed, especially the ones on the other side of your island here. When do you hear that noise? That noise is okay to hear. That's the slide mechanism saying, I'm in as far as I need to go. Don't bring me in any further. Sorry. Door slide. Actually, we could, let's back up. We'll do slow, door side fast, last, so we can get out of this door. Lastly, door side. Stand out of the way and watch it come in. Again, touch your pad, gotta keep my finger on it. Make sure the uh, extension on your table is down. Come back here, go to lighting, shut off my last light, and exit the unit. Now these steps, opening or closing, the biggest thing you want to remember, make sure this exterior door is all the way open. Otherwise this could catch on it when bringing it in. So we lift this up, you do have adjustable feet here. So we press in on that to move these. Set it up inside. Now before you leave the dump station, make sure you lock and deadbolt this door. I say that in case you want to get back in there and check your panels and watch your tanks while you're dumping. Lift and turn your handle. And that door is ready for travel. If we are out boondocking, we're going to go dump this freshwater tank. Fresh water drain. It'd be that white one right there. Open that up. Otherwise, come to the front of the unit, unhook our cable, our water, our power, come through our leveling system, touch both of them again, and turn that on, and you're going to hit retract all. Retract all is going to bring up all of your auto leveling system, and it's going to return your front leveling jacks. To where they were before you hit auto level. Then, using the front, you can bring up your landing legs up or down to your onto your hitch. Hook up your hitch and head on up to the dump station. Not the dump station. Park accordingly. Your dump's gonna be just in front of your tires on your driver's side of your tow vehicle or off camp side. Arrive. Hook up your 10-foot hose. Come in here and pull your black tank. That's going to be your sewage. Once that black tank sounds like it's no longer draining, hop up in your coach, look at your panel, make sure it's empty. If it is, leave that handle open, grab that hose at the dump station, and hook up to this tank flush. Let that run for a good five minutes. It's going to wash all that nastiness out of your black tank. When that's done, remove that hose, put your cap back on, Make sure all that washout that you just put in there has washed out. Then uh, close your black tank. 
Pull your uh, galley tank here. Once that's done, pull your gray tank. While that gray tank's dumping, come back up underneath here. Get in there and open up them low point drains. Where they are. There they are, up between the axles. When some are done draining, come back up here. Make sure that gray's done. If it is, remember that's cleaner water, just sinks your showers. That'll clean your sewage hose out for you. Unhook it, take it, come back to the back to your unit. All right, we got extra gray tank back here. That's gonna be for your outdoor kitchen sink. So if that's just regular waters, feel free to just dump it wherever. But if you have some things in it, go ahead and dump it into a dump. And then head on home. Again, thank you so much for your purchase. Hope you enjoy this Columbus for many years to go. Happy camping.